Good morning, everyone. It's time to go on the record. The consequences of three weeks in a row of eight feet of snow uh, overall have been real. It's had a huge impact on Main Street businesses. The economics of our fierce February. Governor Charlie Baker talks dollars, makes major changes at the Health Connector, and prepares for his budget this week. Boston's winter transportation meltdown. Could it affect the city's bid to host the 2024 Olympic Games? We feel very confident that what the T uh, has in place, uh, we'll, they'll be more than prepared for 2024. Trying to put a shine on the MBTA sneaker, the Summer Games new CEO, Richard Davey, is here this morning. Much to discuss on this first day of March. From WCPB Boston, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and oh, by the way, congratulations. You have survived February. I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center 5's political reporter, Janet Booth. Thank you for joining us on OTR. Our guest this morning is Richard Davey. is the state's former transportation secretary. He is no stranger to OTR. He is here today in his new position as CEO of the much-debated Boston 2024 Olympics. Welcome back to OTR. Imagine if it was the Winter Olympics that you would be there. <laughs> we've just well, we've, gone through it. Yeah, I, and I think space saving would have been a, a sport probably and a few others. So we would have had our own are, you, are, are you enjoying the dreaded private sector? I am enjoying the uh, private sector, yes. Although it seems to be more public than I expected. No, well, there you go. There you go. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us this morning. So let's uh, go, dive right into the Olympics. There's been a lot of debate about how much money needs to be approved by the state and local government uh, in Boston. Are you telling us that everything that's needed for the Olympics that needs to be paid for by government has already been approved at this point? Except for the security cost, Janet. So to run the Olympics on the capital side, we are seeking no uh, state or federal funds at all. The transportation piece, uh, what we need has already either been paid for or is currently under construction. But on the security side, we've been clear, we need the federal government's help. If we don't get that, we cannot run the games in Boston. And in fact, I don't think any American city can do it. Um, however, there is a question about renovations to areas that are going to be key to your mm -hmm. Olympic. For example, the JFK Red Line. That is going to be the key station to get to the Olympic Village. Yes. There's no money in the bond transportation bill to upgrade that. And if you don't upgrade it, it will be a disaster with all those millions of people going through there. No, it won't be a disaster. Uh, we would like to see it upgraded. I think the T would too. You're right, it's currently not funded, but it's not a venue. It's uh, for the Athletes Village where the UMass uh, station would be. It would certainly help. But a lot of the athletes will be bussed around to their locations, so we can make it work, no doubt. But I think for the residents long term, you know, improving the JFK UMass station would be a great win. But the Boston Globe estimated that at least $4 billion in additional government spending is needed in order to get the Olympics running smoothly here in Boston. Do you disagree with that figure? I don't disagree with the figure. I disagree with how it was characterized. So we don't need those projects in order to, uh, to have the Olympics happen. What we need are new red and orange line cars, for sure, but well before the Olympics, so the city runs. There are some other projects, Government Center T Station, which is already under construction, the widening of 128, which is just about to complete. Those things we need, and as I said, those are in process. There are good projects that we think that would be great legacies for the city and the state uh, that we support. Uh, because this is a conversation not just about the Olympics, but about proving Massachusetts. And, and if, and if Boston gets the bid, it needs to guarantee funding, correct? Uh, we have to guarantee that we will pull off the Olympics. So, right. so let's play the game of what if. Mm -hmm. What if there is a, if the corporate money dries up? There is an economic downturn. What if security threats scare off ticket buyers? There are a lot of what ifs that are that are hanging out there. There are a lot of obviously challenges in the next nine and a half years we have to deal with that. I think one that I've talked about is if there was a downturn in the economy, folks have said, well, if real estate developers get concerned, you know, prices also come down. Having you know managed a large or construction organization at MassDOT during a recession, we saw prices come down. So. Uh, I think there are ways to manage around that, insurance programs and a few others. But again, I think the economic benefits we would expect from the Olympics, job creation, economic development for the state well, and, and the region and, and are significant. Live, and, and in the environment we live in, what about a terror threat? I mean, you know, obviously something happened during the marathon sure. and, and recently episodes in New York. I mean, it's a very yeah. real part of our life. And yet we had a very successful marathon in 2014. The mayor, the city, uh, and state officials all worked well. I would expect that that kind of uh, planning process would be in place for the 2024 Olympics as well. Let, let, let me let you listen to what people have to say. Our Ted sure. Reinstein went out in the street and talked to people. Listen to what Ted has to say. Part of Boston's successful bid so far to host the 2024 Summer Olympic Games has been its positive portrayal as a global city that works. But after this winter's transportation meltdown in the greater Boston area, have the city's chances been affected? <laughs> 
if the tea's running the way it is now, no one's going to get anywhere they want to go. You can't depend on it for work. You can't depend on it for getting to a doctor's appointments, anything. If you can't get your workers in and out, which is more important than some games, I think then that would really hurt your credibility. People are probably frustrated, you know, the tempers are flaring. and But I think once things get back to normal, it'll be, it'll be okay. Inbound service. The city's uh, chances might be affected in any way? Uh, not if they invest the money they need to in transportation infrastructure. No, because it was a once in a lifetime type of thing. They've got two years to clean it up, and I think they've got two years. And to two years for the show. IOC to forget about it. And two years for them to show that they can do a better job. So let, let me state the obvious. There won't be eight feet of snow when the, when the 2024 summer. And if there is, we're in big trouble. And if there is, there, you know, we're in big trouble. Uh, but how do you feel about the uh, uh, the movement to put the issue of the summer games on a ballot for the people of Boston? So uh, obviously, folks have the right to do that. I think the conversation is more complicated than a yes or no question. I've had a lot of folks that stop me and say, hey, I'm, I'm in support as long as you move this venue. Or I have some questions. I'd be in support if this happens. So you know, we have public meetings going on, 20 meetings in, in uh, 20 weeks across the state to engage that conversation. Obviously, folks can do a ballot question. I think it's more complicated than yes or no. Um, it, but he can be just as deadly for the transportation system unless it's fixed, is it not? Certainly on the rail side. Uh, Jan, you're absolutely right, Janet. Uh, just a few months ago, uh, you were the state's transportation secretary, and for a better part of a decade, you were involved with the MBTA. Do you really think that the International Olympics Committee is not going to be watching what's happening here right now and thinking, uh, I don't know? Well, they're watching us every day, and they certainly uh, are excited, I think, about the prospects of Boston for a whole host of reasons. But look, as you said, uh, we're not bidding on the Winter Olympics, and we have nine and a half years to get our transportation act together. You know, we have the Boston Marathon coming up in uh, 60 days. Uh, there are twice or three times as many athletes that participate in that than the Olympics. We have a, a million spectators. So, you know, it's not about the Olympics. It's about building out the infrastructure for what we have today and also for the future of the city what I think is on the table, the new red and orange line cars and some other improvements, which won't come overnight, I think those will be significant improvements. So you don't think the International Committee is going to be scared off by what they're watching right now? I don't think so. In fact, I think for, for us in, at, at Boston 2024, it's, it's all about prompting this conversation. We hope the Olympics can be the opportunity. We have a, certainly a crisis right now, but also the opportunity to say, where do we want to be and how do we invest as a company? Well, we want to be at the OTR pop quiz right now, so are you ready for that? Uh, I don't want to be there, but we are there. So. See, look at this. I have in my hot little hands the questions for you, sir. Question one, Bay State Congressman Bill Keating sits on the Homeland Security Committee. He has put a big price tag for what it would cost to provide security for the 2024 games. What is the number that he has provided? Uh, I don't know the number he's provided. I think the one we provided is between one and two billion dollars. And he's focused on the one part of it. Okay, great. Congressman, Congressman Richie Neal of Western Massachusetts is cool to spending federal dollars for the Olympics since mostly Eastern Massachusetts would benefit. What huge federal transportation project does the congressman say already took federal dollars away from his constituents? Ah, uh, the big dig. And he adds that Western Mass would benefit more from high-speed rail. We continue on the record with Richard Davis. Stay with us.